OK, so let's introduce a model of and introduce some semantics to describe ordering of memory operations between different processors. One of the most common ones that you're going to see is called sequential consistency. It's by no means the only one out there. This is a very strong ordering um, compared to any of the processors you guys run on your computers today. This is extremely strong. None of your computers actually implement this strong of an ordering. But it's a good basis to think, reason about and reason about parallel programs. So we're going to study sequential consistency some. So up here we have one, two, three, four, five processors, one big memory, still a very basic model. We, don't have, we have not introduced any caches or anything crazy like that yet, because um, that makes all these things a little bit harder. Either caches are out of order. And what sequential consistency is, is the idea that you take all of the instructions in all of the programs, executing on all the processors, and you guarantee that the execution sequence that is seen by all of the processors is some valid in-order interleaving of those instructions of the relative processors themselves at the beginning. So to give you an example, if you have processor 1 and processor 2, and processor 1 goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and processor 2 goes uh, execution instruction 5, 6, 7, 8, you're guaranteed that some interleaving here is what happened in sequential consistency. So let's say 1 and 2 happened, and then 5 happened, and then 3 happened, and then 6 happened, and then 7, and then 8, and then 4. That is a valid sequential consistent order. Likewise, another one that is easier to reason about is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight. That's valid in sequential, consist sequential consistency. Likewise, I don't know, we'll say five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, eight is a valid order. What is not valid is going to be something like. 5, 1, I don't know, 3, 2, 4, 7, 8. Six, uh, missing one. Uh, 5. No, 5, 6, no 6. OK, we'll put 6 in there. Because we've reordered one of the individual address sequences, 2 and 3 should be ordered. So this gives us some guarantees. Um, so the, the basic idea is that it's an arbitrary order preserving interleaving. So each processor's addresses are preserved in order, but they can be interleaved between the different threads arbitrarily. Okay, I want that to sink in for a second. Anyone have questions about what the model is or why this is a good model? Okay, I'm going to ask a deep question here. Why is this a model that almost no one ever implements? So the reason no one actually goes to try to do this is, as all the things we had talked about when we were talking about out-of-order processors, you want to try to reorder your loads and stores for performance reasons. Um, and the second you try to introduce something like cache into your processor, this gets very hard. Because 
communication becomes a really bottleneck. You might have one processor that did a, for instance, a store into its, its cache, and not everyone has seen that value update. So unless you actually want to have one monolithic memory that you play all loads and stores against in some interleaved yet in order relative to the processor order, and everyone sees that exact ordering, you're not going to want to actually implement that, and that's very hard to do. Okay, so fun, fun example here of sequential consistency. Let's look at two threads, T1 and T2, and two variables. Actually, we'll, we'll talk about four variables here. X, Y, X prime, and Y prime. X prime and Y prime are the outputs here. So we do stores to those. <clears throat> At the beginning of time, we are going to say x and y are initialized to 0 and 10, respectively, as shown. OK, let's, let's talk about what are valid sequential consistent outcomes here for x prime and y prime. Now, this is not actually easy to detect right off the get-go. Does anyone know which of these four? OK, I think the answer is on your sheet, but don't go, don't go look at it. Um, it's not actually easy to detect which one is sequentially consistent, which one's not sequentially consistent. So let's, let's walk through a few interleavings here to see what happens. OK, so we're going to have thread 1, thread 2, xy, and xy primes. Let's say we execute t1, and then t2 in time. So we're going to draw time this way. So we do, we do the store of 1, we do the store word of 11, and then we do a load word of y, a store word of y prime, a load word of x, and a store word of x prime. We do this store here. Um, at the beginning of time, as I said, x has 0 and y has 10. We do a store here, and this is going to be storing to x1. So we're going to update the value of x there. Then we're going to store 11 to y. OK, so 11 gets loaded there in time. We do this load. Nothing, no, nothing changes. We do a store here to y prime. And we look at what we got when we did this load of y. We loaded 11, and we're going to store 11 to y prime at this point. Then we do a load of x, which has 1 in it now. And we do a store to x prime. It's going to have 1. So to sum up, we have 11 and 1. OK, so that's this one. That's a valid output. And what's interesting to see here is even with this strict memory model, we're going to end up with different possible outcomes. There's not only one possible outcome. There's actually multiple possible valid outcomes here. OK, so let's look at another. Let's use the, the same columns at the top here. And let's say we have. These two split so that the first store happens here, and the second, uh, second store from thread one happens there. Still sequentially consistent, because they're being ordered inside of the respective threads. And there's a global ordering that everyone sees. OK, so let's, let's go through that one. So we do store 
word of one. Then we execute in thread two load word of r1 y, store word of r1 y prime. OK, so let's go to the store here. The store is going to, uh, well, actually, we'll finish writing it first. Load word of r2 from x, store word r2 x prime. And then finally, we, we finish off here writing the store word of 1 to x. OK. Oops, I did this wrong. Yep. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Store word's going to happen here first. And remember, we started out with 0 and 10 in, zero, in, in x and y. So the store word of 1 is going to happen. It's going to update x to be 1. We do this load, and it's going to get 10 now. And we store 10 into y prime. We do a load word here of x. And we're basically going to store that back into x prime. So what was x? We look back in this column. Most up-to-date value is 1. OK, so we come over here and we say that's 1. And then finally, we do a store word of 11 into y. OK. Or y, uh, to, to y, 11 into y. Well, what's the output here? Well, the output is 1 and 10. And this value, the store, didn't do anything. I mean, it updated the value of y, but it didn't affect y prime or x prime in any way, shape, or form. OK, so that ends up being 1 and 10 is a valid sequentially consistent output. Let's try a non-sequentially consistent execution order and see what happens. Let's say, I don't know, which is a good one to execute? Um, there's a couple different ways to get this. Let's execute this instruction here first. So the store to y. And we're going to reorder that with the store to x. And we're going to execute thread two in between those two operations. So We use store word of 11 to y. So we have out of, let's say t1 is executing an out of order processor here, for instance. Then we're going to execute all of thread 2, and we'll execute all of thread 2 in order. And then finally, we're going to come back on thread 1 here and do the store of, let's say, 1 to x. OK, so x and y start out with 0 and 11, or excuse, 0 and 10, rather. Store of 11 to y, OK, that's going to update this to be 11. We're going to load y now. So we're going to load this 11 into r1. Then we're going to store out to y prime 11. Then we're going to load, let's say, 
x here, well, x is just the initial value, so we're going to get 0 into r2. Then we're going to store out 0 into x prime there. And then finally here, we're going to do a store of 1 to x. So what's our output? Well, our output is 0 and 11. And, but we had a non-sequentially consistent, this is a non-sequentially consistent output here. So there's no way, we can work through all the different possible combinations, but the only way you're possibly going to get a 0 for x prime and a 11 for y prime is if you execute non-sequentially consistent uh, execution sequence. And this was a, because we flipped the ordering of these two instructions, that made this not sequentially consistent. So we get a big x over it. We could work through all the other possible combinations here, but there's actually another, interestingly enough, there's actually another way, another interleaving that gets you the same non-sequentially consistent output from a different sequentially consistent ordering of these instructions, or, or a different non-sequentially consistent ordering of the instructions. So that, that can't be true. Okay, so what this is really trying to say is that in our processors we've looked at up to this point, we've had some arcs. And an example of an arc here is that if you do a load into R1 and then use the value of R1 to do the store, sorry, these should be uh, order flipped for MIPS compatibility. Yeah, I flipped in there. I missed here. Okay. Um, for this store here to happen, it needs to wait for the value of R1. So it's just simple read after write dependence. Likewise, here you have a read after write dependence. And it's a question of consistency. Uh, uh, you can have other dependencies. So for instance, if you do a load in a store, and they're to the same address. There needs to be an order between those, which we've already talked about in this class. What we've not talked about is additional sequential consistency requirements. So if you want to have additional sequential consistency requirements, what it looks like is every memory operation is dependent on the prior memory operations in its own thread. So we're going to draw that as this red arc here. And you can sort of see it here, but also this is dependent on this, and this is dependent on that, and that's dependent on that, but sort of through transitivity, they don't draw all the arcs. So something, something to think about. Okay, so we've got a question that comes up here. I think we already asked this question, but does a system with caches and out of order processors provide a sequentially consistent view of memory? Answer's probably not. It's pretty hard to do. You could potentially try to build a processor which is out of order and, and do this, but we talked about breaking and reordering all of these instructions in an out of order processor. So we're gonna try to think about what is the correct model if you cannot go for full sequential consistency. You're asking, is it the job of the compiler to guarantee this ordering? OK, so what we're actually talking about here is the hardware breaking the ordering and just reordering things randomly that the compiler can possibly never even try to control. That's the, the programmer is at fault there. The programmer should not be assuming that. <laughs> the programmer assumes, assumes some, basically, programmers try to assume something like sequential consistency. And what we're saying is that none of the hardware out there implements sequential consistency. So the programmer can't assume that. It was a bad assumption on the programmer's perspective. Um, so the compiler, for instance, the reason why the programmer assumes that is because it's kind of the rational thing to do. It's like the, the reasonable, rational thing to do. But it's really hard to go implement something fast under those constraints. So instead, what people do is they try to uh, come up with something weaker than that, which still gives the programmer some semblance of programmability. And that's what we're going to be talking about 
the rest of uh, today's lecture and next lecture um, is what, what are those semblances of rationality we can give the programmer. But this is one program and this is another program, or uh, this is one thread and this is another thread in the same program. But the compiler cannot uh, guarantee this ordering because the out-of-order processor will just move things around the disregards the compiler. We already talked about the uh, out-of-order processors moving loads past stores and stores past loads in the hardware. So, um, and what we're saying here is if you want to actually implement full sequential consistency, all those optimizations that the hardware and out-of-order processors want to do are invalid. We don't want to really do that. Um, Okay, so that's sequential consistency.